Hey guys, here's a little bit of an overview video of the DCA75. It's a component tester. I was talking to Jez from um, Peak Electronics about, about the DCA75 um, and he said I'll send you one. So he sent it in and I've been using it quite a bit over the last month. Mainly for germanium transistor testing, which is what a lot of guitar pedal um, builders buy one of these for. Um, for, for germanium transistor testing, but it does other things too and um, this video is just going to be about what you can use it for for guitar pedal building um, some, of the, some, of the, some of the functions it does that is useful to us. Before we even look at the DCA75, just wanted to make a point. There's a lot of cheaper ones out there I see people talk about. For me personally, and this is just a personal statement I suppose you could say, I don't, I don't bother having any, um, anything that measures uh, at my disposal that is something that I don't trust. If I don't trust it, I don't have it, pretty much. I, it's just the way that I work. I just don't see the point in using a measurement device to check something if the, if the reading that it gives, gives me may not be anywhere even in the ballpark. With a cheap component, a lot of the cheap um, component testers out there are just knockoffs. They're not, there's, there's no innovation or perhaps even understanding behind what the device is doing. It's just a carbon copy. Um, so for me, I, I, can't, I can't trust something like that. I know this, is, I know this DCA75 is a lot more expensive than, than, than uh, a, cheap, a cheap component um, knockoff, but you know, that's it's just, the way, it's just the way I roll. Maybe you've got a cheap, a cheap component tester that works really well um, and, it, and is accurate and you've checked that it it's accurate and everything, and that's great, but like I said, for me, um, I'd rather go with something that's got, it's also got support as well. If you need to ask Jez a question, you can. You can email him and say, I just wanted to ask, it's it's the, the thing's telling me this, what, what does that mean or how is it doing it? I've done that already a couple of times and Jez has come back and said, oh yeah, you know, this, that, the other, this is how it does it, this is why it does it that way. He'll explain it to you. I don't think you're going to get that from a something that you're going to buy on eBay. Anyway, just a quick note on that. So back to the DCA75, what does it do? Well, it actually does quite a few things. It measures quite, um, quite a few different components. And my spin on this is going to be, well, it's going to be my spin on it, like it always is. Um, you'll see a lot of, uh, there's, there's a few um, videos on YouTube already about, um, you know, the specifics and the electronics and things like that, and the electronic en engineers that will go into the electronic engineering side of of, of this device which is probably what a lot of people out there would use it for. But I know there's a lot of pedal builders that use this and I'm taking the pedal builder approach which is kind of whimsical <laughs> but um, it'll probably apply to you more than maybe some of the other videos. So let's have a look at what it actually does. I've got the manual behind me here um, and I'm just going to read um, some, of the, some of the components that it can test. Okay so some of the, some of the components uh, it, it can, this is the components you can check for you. Diodes, Zener diodes, diode networks, LEDs, bicolor LEDs with two leads, bicolor LEDs with three leads, bipolar um, junction transit BJTs, um, Darlington transistors, enhanced mode MOSFETs, depletion mode MOSFETs, enhanced mode IGBTs, depletion mode IGBTs, uh, JFETs, um, thyristors and triacs and voltage regulators. So a lot of those components we actually use in pedal building, some of them we don't. IGBTs, um, thyristors and triacs um, being a, a couple of them, but voltage regulators, Darlington transistors, um, uh, BJTs, germanium, it does germanium ones, which is a big reason why a lot of people buy this um, this device. And I'll be doing a separate video on the, on the germanium transistor side of things because it's going to get a little technical in that one. Um, but this one I'm just going to keep nice and brief. So it does quite a lot of things that we use for um, pedal building and it can check things for you. I, I was thinking the other day um, about when I, when I put a pedal together um, with all components I usually check with the multimeter resistors, capacitors, um, just to make sure that they're working and, and you know, the, func the, the value is correct. And I just thought to myself, I never actually do that with diodes or, or BJTs or anything like that. I just put them in and just trust that they work. And 99.99999% of them will work. But 
I mean, it only takes a second to check to check something like that. So a device like this could be used to check your components before you put them in your pedal. That's just one of the million things that, that I've found this thing can do that I find really handy. You can check LEDs to, to check the color because when you actually run a test on it, the, the LED will flash. I'll show you. So with the DCA75, you don't have to worry about which lead you're connected to. You just connect it to any random lead and it will tell you which one's the anode and which one's the cathode. It detects it automatically when it, when it, when it runs its test. So you just press on. It is actually flashed. There you go. So this one's obviously a white um, LED and it tells us that um, the red is the anode, the green is the cathode. Let's see if I can put that in the video and read it. No, no, it's a bit too difficult. But you can see the forward voltage, it's actually backwards for me. Two, is that 2.837? I think so. Um, at 5 milliamps. So it's putting 5 milliamp through the LED and measuring the forward voltage. Your multimeter will do the same thing. Um, and if you look up your multimeter manual, it will tell you what, what, it should tell you what current it is actually using when it does that forward voltage test. Um, so, so you can use it to check LEDs, the color of LEDs. I don't, I don't need my that little LED tester thing I've got anymore in the bin because um, this does the same, does the same job. Sometimes when you push down, so I just run that test again. If you push the down button, it'll show you more information. But yeah, for an LED, it, it, that's it's pretty straightforward. That's all you have to show it. Um, so it does that with other diodes, of course, too. Um, uh, any diode that, that you can pretty much think of. You can even do it with a um, the junction of a of a uh, transistor as well. Um, so you can you can check the forward voltage of the junction, um, which is pretty handy too. So that's the quick test. Well, it's, a, well, it's an example of the quick test function on the um, on, on on the DCA. Um, and it, I'll, I'll show you a, I'll show you a transistor first before we move on to the curve trace. So this is just a 2N5088, um, and we'll test this one again. So you just press the test button, runs its test. Bit of glare on that, sorry. Come through the window, and it will tell it will detect it. So it says it's an MPN silicon VJT, as you can see in there. And then it will, and then it says tells you what the pinout is. So red is collected to the red is connected to the collector, green's connected to the base, and blue is connected to the emitter. And it has a HFE of 463. Now that HFE is obviously interpreted by the base current, um, and it varies by the base current. I don't want to go too much into this because I'm going to go over this thoroughly in um, the germanium transistor test. So we'll just take a quick um, a quick look through through some of the um, some. So um, it's four, as you can see, it's 463 HFE with a collector current of five milliamp. Um, and again, I'll go over what that actually means in the uh, in the germanium transistor testing video. Um, and then we've got um, VBE, so the um, voltage from the base to the emitter is um, uh, is the, the drop for the, the diode junction is uh, 0.76, um, which indicates to the DCA that it's silicon. That's that's how it determines that it's a silicon transistor, or one of the reasons it determines it's a silicon transistor. Um, and that is with a base current of 5 milliamp. And um, VCE saturation, which I think is actually a rough determination of when the transistor is actually turning on, I think, uh, is 0 0.025 volts. Could be wrong about that. And that's with a, um, that's with a uh, collector current of 5 milliamp and a base current of 1 milliamp. There's no ICE leak. Leakage is associated with germanium transistors and again we'll look at that later. And then it goes back to the top of the um, of the measurements. So it does a really quick sort of does a quick um, test like that for you which is pretty which is pretty handy. But the real power of this thing comes in to when you plug it into a computer because you can do, as I said before, you can do curve tracing and things like that. So let's have a look at its curve tracing uh, capabilities. Before we do that, I just want to talk about the, pe the usages for pedal building. Um, and if you're building a few pedals, if you're building, a, I've said this in other videos, if you're building a couple of pedals, this, this isn't the sort of thing that you'd go out and buy because it's, because it's expensive. If you're building if you're building regularly, it could be something you, you could work, you could look into buying because 
if you think about it, it can measure JFETs um, and it can measure VGS of JFETs, even though I haven't done that yet, I haven't got to that point with it yet, I'm still mucking around with um, germanium transistors. You can do it, I asked, I asked Jez, he said can, it says in the manual as well. Um, and it can measure germanium transistors and it can check your components, etc. It would probably, if you're buying germanium transistor sets, it would probably save you money, you know what, I mean, if you're paying $15 a set, 10 sets, and you pretty much paid it off. Um, uh, you could measure 20 and sell another another 10, and it would pay, and it would and it would pay for it. It would pay for it for you. Um, just a few ideas as to what you can actually use this thing for. If you're into electronics, you're a hobbyist, you're into electronics, you should get one because it does a thousand other things that you can use it for as well. Um, it saved me so much time measuring germanium transistors. I wish I had had one a couple of years ago very handy thing to have around and it's the and it's the thing that I use to, to measure germanium transistors now. It gives me it gives me more information about the germanium transistor as well. If I encounter one then I'm not sure um, what it's doing or it's giving me back some strange readings. I can check it closer with the curve tracing. So I'm not going to show you curve tracing because that's going to get a little technical. I want to keep this this friendly this video friend short and friendly. Um, I'm just going to show you one other one other example of what this thing can do, um, and I want to see if I can trick it actually with a diode. Actually, I just remembered it doesn't tell you whether it's silicon or germanium with the diode, of course. Um, so it's not going to trick it as such. Um, but it is the OA126, and it has a breakover voltage um, actually printed on the case. This is the cover coveted. Um, diode that people are paying ridiculous amounts of money for. I don't, I don't understand why, but um, that's a whole different topic. Um, so let's test it and see what it comes up with. So it should be 5 volts, um, the breakover voltage. So it comes up with the reverse, the reverse breakover voltage is 5 volts, um, and forward voltage of 0.7 volts. You'll see clearly, um, I might do an uh, example of a curve trace for that one because you'll see clearly what that actually means. Let's do it now. I'll do one curve trace because this should be pretty straightforward. So sorry, I probably should just point out what a Zener diode is just in case you guys don't know. It's basically like a normal diode. This is a normal diode characteristic. Um, you apply a voltage and then when it hits a certain point, so point seven, point, well, 0.62 in this case, volts, that's when the current will flow. This is a, this is a, as you can see, this is the, the left-hand side um, uh, measurement is is current, um, current flow. So as you can see, when it hits 0.6 volts, current starts to flow um, quite sharply at that point. It turns on. Um, with a Zeno diode, it can actually work in the opposite direction as well. Um, so if you apply a voltage in the in the opposite direction, it will also have a similar characteristic, but it's higher. Um, it's usually much higher than um, than in the forward forward bias mode in the, in the reverse bias mode you you uh, the, the, the the diode is specified for a particular for a particular voltage so this one is five volts and you can sort of see around five volts is where it sort of switches on um, not exactly totally accurate but it's around that point um, and so you could use that for like a volt for a basic voltage regulator to, to um, uh, prevent uh, voltage spikes um, or to regulate voltage um, as well. Uh, so that's basically what a Zener diode does. And with these OA126s, I don't think anyone actually cares too much about the actual <laughs> Zener property. They just want it because it's a germanium diode that has point that has point over 0.6 volt 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 forward drop, and they sound good. Um, so there you go. But they use it in a very basic in a very basic way, but it's actually kind of like two diodes back to back. So you could actually, I suppose, replace two diodes with, with just one of those and you have a sort of similar, um, well, it's the, obviously the forward voltage is a lot higher than a normal diode is, but you know, there you go. So I've actually learned a bit from having this around and the curve tracing ability, because the, the curve tracing ability kind of shows you uh, a bit sort of like a three dimensional view of what uh, a measurement does with a device. Um, with a with a multimeter, you usually just get one, you know, one figure. One this, this resistor is one k. This voltage is five volts, etc. But with a um, component tester that has curve tracing abilities, you can sort of see 
what happens at different samples um, when you're measuring something. Um, and we'll go into more, we'll see more curve tracing in the germanium, germanium transistor testing video with the DCA75. I've got, I think the curve tracing ability is a better suited application for, for measuring germanium transistors than the quick, the quick function. Um, I don't think the quick function is um, going to give you a good snapshot of what the actual HFE of germanium transistors are. And I'll go into more detail about that because it gets a little technical. Um, but that's it for this one. I'm trying to just keep it short and friendly. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you've got an overview of what the, what the DCA75 can do and whether it will suit your needs or not. It suits my needs. It saves me a hell of a lot of time. Um, and it's, it's just been fantastic. I tell you, I've, I've, um, I, like I said, I've learned a lot from it and I've been using it a heap. It's, it's a great thing to have around. I've got um, Velcro stuck on the back and it's up here because I'm grabbing for it every five seconds. So um, I need, I'm need i keeping it close by. It's just it's, it's really suited for, for pedal building if you're building a lot of pedals. I, I think it's just, it's just a great tool to have around. So thanks for watching um, and um, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe for more videos and I'll have that germanium transistor testing video up soon. Um, and we'll also do JFET testing too. Uh, I haven't had time to look into that in some more detail. Um, I've been doing the germanium stuff at the moment, but I'm going to look into the JFET measuring um, ability of the, of the DCA as well and have some, have some information up for that too. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, have a good day. See ya.